<laughs> hey everybody, thank you for joining us again. I'm Stacy with the Wedding Expo and we're here to talk about do it, DIY, doing it yourself, and how to mix that with working with your wedding pros. And we're going to talk about some things that worked, some things that didn't work, and just to give you some ideas of how you can mesh those two. So first let's start off by having everybody introduce themselves. And Brian, you want to go first? Yes. Hello, I'm Brian Carrizales with ABC Cake Shop and Bakery. Great, thank you, Brian. I'm glad you're with us again. Thank you. Uh, and Megan? Hi, everybody. I'm Megan Brogan with Shutter Force Photography. Great. So while we're talking to you, Megan, what have you seen people try to do it themselves that, that frankly, they shouldn't have done it that way? Because it, it's one of those <laughs> epic fails. <laughs> sure, yeah, we've, we've seen a handful. We've seen uh, some really, really creative solutions for people with their their DIY plans. And uh, from a photography st standpoint specifically, there's a couple of things that uh, we've seen go both ways. Um, one is I was actually thinking about engagement shoots. So um, a lot of our couples, um, all of our packages include an engagement session. Um, we use that as an opportunity for our couples to kind of get to know what it's like to work with us ahead of time, plus get some beautiful photos. Um, but not all of our couples are interested in doing that. And, and so for some, honestly, it's a way that we can actually reduce the cost of the package. Um, because sometimes they have great photographers in their family that they'd like to have, um, you know, take their engagement photos or their, or just opt out altogether. And that's, we're flexible with that. We have seen people kind of DIY that by having a family member take their wedding or their engagement photos and uh, have it going very poorly. <laughs> um, Primarily not necessarily because the photos were terrible, but the experience was not awesome. Um, and primarily that's because uh, when you have a, a close family member taking photos of you and your significant other in, you know, kind of romantic poses, it can be very uncomfortable. <laughs> it's kind of the benefit of actually having a stranger come and take those, those photos because there's that bit of separation. Um, we had a bride and groom that um, their dad is a landscape photographer, amazing photographer, and you know he's starting to get into photographing people, and they were trying to save a little money, so they had their dad, or the bride's dad, photograph them for their engagement shoot, and the bride came to me afterwards and said it was one of the most awkward experiences of her whole life, and it's really awkward now because she does not like the photos, but her father took them, so there's like, you know, there's an attachment there, and there's, you know, he wants them to like, you know, blow them up and really big and put them all over their house. And she's not really excited about that. And it, it just created a little bit of uh, a drama. So we, we kind of count that as a fail. We actually have a good chuckle about it. Um, her and I, um, we, uh, after their wedding, they, they, they actually put up a whole bunch more of their wedding photos than their engagement photos. It was kind of an opportunity to kind of move past that phase in their life. They're no longer engaged, so they're in celebrating their wedding instead, and we've kind of worked through that. Um, but, uh, but we have seen it be successful as well. Uh, for for some couples, if they you know if they use a friend or um, you know a lot of times you know kind of up and coming photographers are, will will offer engagement sessions at a very very reduced rate or something like that, and it may be one of their friends from college, and we've seen people kind of you know work around it um, in a DIY way that can that can work out while still being able to afford professionals uh, for their wedding day. Um, so we've we've seen it work both ways. Well, that's good because and I've said this before, but when they've done surveys of people and what they wish they could change, not having a professional photographer was the number one thing people wish they could go back to redo because they haven't, you, know, you lose the moment of, if you're doing it for your wedding. The sure. engagement, I get that, but, cause you can always redo that too. But the yeah. wedding, you can't. And I've heard of a situation where um, a sister-in-law shot a wedding and now the whole family isn't speaking because people took sides. I mean, horrible things that have happened in mm -hmm. just because of trying to get someone to do a job that can't be repeated. And if the expectations aren't met, it can be a huge disaster. And that's, that is the number one thing that brides have complained about of, Hey, you know what, once it's over, the memories might be the only thing they have left. So, so I'm and glad honestly, you brought that up. And honestly, when, when couples are considering, you know, whether or not to hire someone they know, or a family member to do their wedding versus a professional. And the best thing to do is to reach out to ask those questions to professional photographers. You can ask them, what is it about what you do that would be different than what my, my sister-in-law can do for me? Because a lot of couples just don't even consider all of the variables. 
You don't consider the fact that your sister-in-law is not going to be in those photos. You don't consider the fact that she's going to be super stressed out um, and it's going to make you super stressed out on your wedding day. You're not necessarily going to know that, you know, you don't, you don't have that peace of mind that you do when you hire a professional to do that kind of job. Um, someone who has seen weddings go up and down and all around and inside out and be able to roll with all those punches um, when taking out that kind of family drama. And a lot of couples don't necessarily, they've, they've never, maybe they've never been married before. Maybe they haven't been to a lot of weddings. They may not know all these things that can go wrong. And that's why there's nothing wrong with calling up a professional in, you know, whatever vendor category you're looking for and just asking them about, you know, what it is that they're able to bring to their wedding day that's, you know, having, you know, being able to save a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars by having, you know, one of their family members do it. Um, you know, they, they might not be able to ask those questions to that family member, but they can to a professional and the professional might be able to give them advice that says, you know, hey, DIY these things, but maybe save these really important ones for the professionals, like wedding cakes, which I'm sure Brian's going to share with us some goodies. But one more thing about that. What about if their, you know, their cousin's going to be hurt that they didn't ask them? Would, oh, sure. Could you then have you shoot it and the cousin and like give them something specific that they can do? Would that be a way to be able to keep, ah, as I throw my pen around, keep peace, keep peace, but also make sure that you're getting those shots that you want? Would that work? Sure. Honestly, uh, the thing that we've seen mo that's most successful um, when you have, you know, a family member that's very passionate about photography and wants to photograph on the wedding day, the biggest thing is we encourage the couples to have the conversation with the family member about how much they want them to be present on the day and that they don't want them to feel disconnected from their wedding day because there is a certain, you know, sense of disconnect when you are behind a camera the entire time. Uh, if you're a family member, you're supposed to be in that bridal party, but you're, you're not in the wedding photos because you're the one taking the pictures you don't get to fully be present in the, in the wedding day. And most, most of what we've experienced, we've had good success um, with people having those, those frank conversations and, and making it be about being present as opposed to we don't want your talent. It's not that we don't want your talent. It's that we want you to be a part of, you know, of everything. And that's why we've hired a professional so that you don't have the stress of it and try to encourage them in that way. We still have seen people bring their cameras um, and you know, it, it, there are interesting challenges when you're, you know, trying to photograph with someone photographing over your shoulder, uh, you know, on a wedding day. But you know, I, for me, it's more the merrier. I mean, you, even if you have the exact same camera with the exact same lens and the exact same settings, it's still going to be different than w the way I see your wedding day. So, um, you know, oftentimes I try to make buddies out of my fellow photographer nerds that are working the wedding day with me. Um, but um, oftentimes what we'll do is we've seen couples kind of uh, encourage their guests uh, for a certain time to take photos. And that's actually kind of true for cell phones too, because people always ask us the questions about whether or not they want to have a cell phone free uh, ceremony, um, because there's nothing that romantic about, you know, a wedding shot of, the, of, of, of everyone with their camera phones in the way of the photographers. And it's something we battle with all the time. Um, but we know that people want to actually have photos on their phone too. So we've actually seen couples incorporate into their ceremony um, a moment where they actually have the officiant ask everyone to get their cell phones out and take a, a photo of the bride and groom, like right now. And the bride and groom like made a joke out of it and kind of like posed for the camera. And then they said, okay, now everybody put your phones away because we really want you to be present. And it was amazing because as the photographers in the back were like, oh, all these cameras, all these phones rather. And then they just disappeared. And it like kind of gave people permission um, to be involved in the photography for a moment. They can have their cell phone snap, but then also letting them know that it was important that we wanted you to watch the ceremony not through a screen um, and be present. So, um, so those are some of the ways that you know we've we've seen people kind of tiptoe around the uh, the family photographer friend and um, and and oftentimes we actually talk to those people. We've had, um, we've had a, a father-in-law actually contact us because he wanted, he had very specific questions about our process and the way we deliver our photos. And um, he just needed to know that, that they were, they've selected a, pro, you know, a real professional so that he didn't have to feel like he was, you know, with his camera, making sure that they got the right photos. So we're happy to do, you know, those kind of interviews or, you know, pass on referrals, um, anything that we can do to, you know, 
to, to satisfy that because there is that, you know, not only do they want to take the photos, you know, to, as a gift, but they also want to make sure that they get good photos. And part of that is just making sure that they know what quality their photographers that they've hired are going to deliver. That sounds good. Okay. So now, you know, so my cousin has a great camera though. Isn't a photo just a photo? <laughs> well, uh, a camera is a camera. A photographer is what takes the photo, um, especially on a wedding day. Um, I mean, like I was saying a little bit ago, you can have the greatest equipment in the world. You can have the exact same equipment as another photographer, but the image that they produce is going to look different no matter what. Um, you can't, you cannot create the exact same image as someone else. That's what makes photography so special. Um, so, uh, and a good equipment does not equal good photography <laughs> because a camera, sure, yes. I mean, the, the better the equipment, oftentimes you'll see, you know, quality increase. However, that doesn't guarantee that the person operating the camera knows what they're doing and doesn't necessarily have the experience or it may not be their forte. Uh, like I was saying earlier, the bride's father, who's a landscape photographer, amazing, very, very talented photographer, has no idea how to pose a couple. Um, he was, the photos that are the best from their session are when the couple's this big and it's all a big landscape shot, which is perfect because that's what he's very good at. But the up close ones or the ones where they're, you know, kind of uh, snuggling together and those kind of romantic ones, um, they didn't know how to pose. The father didn't know how to, how to tell them to pose. So it just kind of made for really awkward combinations. Um, great equipment, amazing camera, actually very talented photographer, but there's that one piece that's missing to make the, the couple be comfortable to be able to deliver the images that they wanted. Um, so again, I mean, it's, it's just like you can have the most amazing mixer in the world, you can have the most amazing ingredients in the world, but if you don't have the technique, if you don't have the experience, if you don't have the passion, you're not going to be able to produce an amazing cake. Same thing with photography. Um, same thing with, you know, invitations. You may have somebody who, you know, they're very crafty and they've got all kinds of, you know, great skills at, at making, you know, creative things at home. Doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be able to create this beautiful letterpress invitation for you that is the stuff of dreams. You know, like you, you, there is that essential component that is beyond just what your equipment is. Yeah, that's, that's so true. It's so funny. I was talking to somebody, a florist one time, since there's no florist on the call with us, who were saying, he was saying he wanted to show everyone how to make boutonnieres. And I thought, well, aren't you cutting into your profits for selling boutonnieres? And he said, are you kidding? Oftentimes when they see how much work and how much stuff they have to buy for it, how much work they have to put into it, they don't want to. And he said, I just give them that so in case they do, but they can understand the process and what's really involved in making it, making it work out well is a lot more complicated than just putting, you know, a flower on a pin and being done, calling it done. Dude, so. Who needs the best example? They are the hardest thing in the world. And they, I mean, just to pin them on, never mind actually make them. I mean, that's something that we, you know, we have a skill that we pick up along the way is we're really good at putting boutonnieres on and adjusting them because uh, it's just something that has to happen on a wedding day. Um, wedding planners tend to be experts at it as well if the florist isn't there to actually do it. Um, but, uh, but oh my gosh, I mean, just knowing where to even put the pin in is, is like rocket science. Um, trying to make sure that it, you know, it doesn't flop around and it's on the right side and it's lined up and not stabbing the groom that you're putting it on and uh, never mind actually putting it together. Like 100%, if you're gonna have boutonnieres, please pay a professional. <laughs> <laughs> because there's nothing more stressful than watching the boutonniere just go bleh. Like, you know, I mean, like, because when you put the boutonniere on, it's go time. It is like ceremony time. And if it collapses right here, it's like, well, I mean, what are you going to do? You're going to have a really sad rose or you're going to just mix them. And then you just, you know, waste all the money you spent on the flowers. If you had just paid for somebody to actually make them, then it was just, you know, okay, let's get them on. Let's go, let's do this thing. Um, yeah, I mean, we've, we've seen people cry over, you know, that kind of a disastrous moment. And that's just stress you don't need on your wedding day. <laughs> that's a good, good, good follow up to that. Yeah. 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 Okay, Brian. Now, you know, my aunt makes an awesome cake. So why can't she make the wedding cake? <laughs> Before that, I want to kind of add to um, oh. your, your statements. Um, 
me, I, I did not get a professional photographer for my wedding. And I'm one of the percentages that I do regret it. To this day, I still regret it. Um, but I opted for a good photographer for my engagement shoot. And I did have some family members that wanted to offer. And my photographer gave me like some really uh, nice advice. She's like, you can blame it on me. She's like, just let them know it's better in the package. Like you can get all your photos um, and I can just do all the work. It wasn't, it was just one big bulk payment included everything, but she pitched it in a way that my other family members would understand and stop asking. Mm -hmm. So I was like, yeah, thank you so much. But it's, you know, the photographer said it would be better this way. So they did the pictures. It came out wonderful. And you do have to kind of balance this, uh, balance what is best for you um with your budget and your style and pleasing other people and I lean more towards me and my budget instead of pleasing other people it is your day so yeah I definitely went with the photographer for my engagement shoot and those are amazing um but yes there's there's ways to kind of um help family members uh or allow family members to help you in different ways Not plus you think about where it comes from like that's the other thing too is you know if someone is 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 trying to say hey I want to make a cake for you or I want to take your engagement photos it is coming from a place of love they are trying to give you something they're trying to save you money they're trying to be a part of your wedding experience so I love what you said that the the photographer said hey you know it's all included and it's it's a great you know it's great for part of the process and um you know it's a, a great chance for us to get to know you and that kind of stuff like that's a great way to explain it and also helps as you know kind of satisfy that you know that desire of the of the family member who really wants to give you that something if they know that you're taken care of that's really ultimately what you know where where it comes from um, so if you can help satisfy them saying, Hey, you know what, we've got a professional, we're in good hands. We're feeling wonderful about it. Then they might be able to go, oh, okay, great. And then, it, and just move on from it. <laughs> Fingers <Yeah>. crossed. <laughs> exactly. And that kind of ties into what Stacey was going to ask as far as if a family member wants to, uh, offer, do a cake. I've had this experience where they came in and, um, they said an aunt's doing my wedding cake and can you do the cookies and cupcakes and the little presentation dessert bar I let them know it should be easier if we switch roles let me do the wedding cake and let them do the cookies and let them do the cupcakes they were worried about oven space and the amount of time to it and I tried to go ahead and inform them a big cake is it takes a while to make but the stress that comes after it's baked the support, the internal structure, the icing of it. It has to be a certain consistency. All those different variables will add more stress than cookies that you can, you know, uh, do semi-homemade. You can kind of get like a, a box and just add certain things to it. That would be a lot easier, a lot less stressful. Um, in this specific scenario, they absorb it. They understood but they leaned more towards letting the family member make that wedding cake and the day of the wedding I got a call from the venue saying their cake is leaning can you come in and try and help us um I asked the venue take some pictures send them to me so I can kind of get uh, we have like a the first aid kit for cakes we have like an icing support it's like little go-to bag kind of thing and I was trying to get it all set up and I saw the pictures and it was beyond anything I could recover. I, it was leaning so bad that my somewhat patchwork wouldn't have helped it. So I let them know we can go ahead and just add more of the things that I made, which were the cupcakes, cookies, and I want to say those pastries as well um, to go and compensate for servings because that cake wasn't going to make it till the reception. There, there was no way it was leaning too bad. The, and when I went there, go and drop off the items, I went there personally, and the aunt was in tears, and she was asking, like, how, how could it have fallen? What, what did, you know, what could have happened? There was so many variables. It's that to go through all the steps that could have caused this, it, it would have just been too long, honestly. It was just to fix a scenario, make it best as possible, more presentation than trying to figure out 
how I could have saved in the past. So my biggest thing is listen to the professionals. I try to make it easier for the family to offer that kind gift or kind gesture, but making it a little more um, uh, successful if it, if it would have been the other way around. So sadly, that one did not go well at all. Um, but and, and let me ask this. My guess is when you get those emergency phone calls, your fix isn't cheap the day, two hours before the wedding. No. no. And because it, it can't be. So if you're doing it just to save money, they need to make sure that they're factoring in what the re rescue. Yeah. It, it's cost. like anything DIY. If, if you've had some experience with, let's say, when you're bringing up like the boutonnieres, if you've had experience kind of doing flowers yourself or you're prepared to kind of watch YouTube and kind of Google things, perfect. But our fees are to go ahead and us as professionals isn't just the product. It's to relieve everything behind the scenes for you. Like when I deliver the cake, the your cake will get there in one piece. I know the venue. It will get there in that one hour time frame. Um, your flavors will be made fresh that day of. If it's going to be a family member, they may not have the oven space that we do. Our oven is almost as big as my office and it has a conveyor belt. So I can do so many cakes without the hassle. So there's a lot of things that you need to kind of um, be aware of. And Megan said it perfectly. Like, ask us so we can walk you through the steps of yes this feels like a lot of money but here's all the reasons why plus taking away stress taking away the time inconvenience of an aunt running around for eight hours trying to make a cake even longer because she may not be fully prepared to doing a cake that large how would she transport it we have big vans that have like eight inches of memory foam mattress so all those different variables to walk you through what we do and what is our job to do for someone that wants to do a very kind gesture. So it's, it is very, very difficult to go ahead and kind of put into words everything we will do for you and what that sum of money will kind of um, put at ease to you. Yeah. And let me ask this, you, you all have liability insurance too, right? So yeah. if somebody gets sick, you're covered. Mm -hmm. Your aunt isn't covered. Yeah. There's an amazing amount of peace of mind that comes with knowing that your vendors are insured and uh, that there's a backup plan and, um, you know, and absolute worst case scenario if you aren't, you know, if, if, the, if the vendor isn't able to deliver, they, you know, you're covered by a contract, you know, as opposed to if a family member, you know, if they lose their memory card or, you know, if the cake implodes on itself on the wedding day, I mean, it, you, it's not like you're going to get that back, um, you know, and you're, you're not going to be able to replicate it uh, and you're not going to be compensated for it, which, yeah. you know, when people are stressing about how much stuff costs, that's a really good thing to know is that, you know, you have a contract, you have, uh, and, and your vendors have liability insurance so that, you know, it just helps you sleep a lot better at night and reduces all that stress, like Brian was saying. Yeah, and, you know, I know that it is, it, things cost a lot, but a lot of it is picking and choosing, too. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe instead, instead of getting that three-tier cake like we were talking about, Brian, for, you know, 10 people because you really want that look, maybe you do something else. Maybe you talk to your vendors about being able to cut down the cost to still let the professionals handle it without, so you're not stuck with these situations of your wedding cake folding on you, yeah. for example. So have you had that happen frequent, or not frequently, but on too many occasions to want to yeah. want to deal with? In variations of it, yes. We've had a lot of scenarios where I get a call the day before and it's of a family member saying I was supposed to make a wedding cake and I burned it and I don't have enough time to go ahead and make another one. Can you make me a cake by today? Maybe. I, it depends on my orders, but yeah, I have so many different scenarios and aspects where the family member didn't expect this to happen or didn't plan for this. And 
I'll walk them through over the process over the phone. I'll kind of help them as best as possible. So there's certain things that I can verbally tell, but I can't teach on how to actually do it. And that's the big difference is that all my wedding decorators are, they go through culinary school. We have like actual, um, a ranking system as far as how good you are. These are the order levels you can actually be doing. Um, so there's, there's a big difference between um, knowing how to do it and trying to actually execute it to the best. So it's, it's a lot. Yeah. And, and I know that some, I don't know about the venues, whether they would be more picky about a cake, but I know with a lot of venues, you can't bring in outside catering. A lot of that is the liability issue because there have been whole wedding parties who have gotten um, food poisoning and all sorts of issues that come from that too. So I know that any of those, those kind of things where you're giving things for people to do, like in jest, there are a lot of rules restrictions. So you need to check with the venues and make sure that you could even do that, entertain yeah. it. And, and don't make your budget based on, okay, I'm gonna have zero for that because Aunt Millie's doing it, but then you better check to make sure Aunt Millie can do it first. Yeah. So that's it. And, that's and a, then factor into what, Aunt Millie, or what you'll have to pay if Aunt Millie can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, at the last minute. Because that's and a the, cost, that's a cost. That's a potential yeah. cost. And, and Millie, in the consultation, I'll, I'll walk them through fine she if she wants to do the cookies or the cupcakes this is how much time you should be expecting minimum realistic add a couple more hours and i'll kind of guide you through on how to kind of execute it as best as possible but there's certain things that you should kind of take off the stress and not let a family member do it's it will be too much honestly yeah so what are your favorite, um, one last question, what are your favorite DIY fails? Just because sometimes they become funny. I have to tell you one, um, Brandy told us about this where they hired a DJ who couldn't really figure out what's going on. He, he mispronounced the bride and groom's name. I think you can beat that, Megan, can't you? <laughs> uh, yeah, we've seen, we've, seen a few, we've seen a few DIY fails. Um, I'd say uh, one of the most popular DIYs that we've seen are photo booths. Um, so, you know, couples that want to create a, a photo booth for their guests, um, but don't hire a professional. Um, we actually um, offer our photo booth services as well. Um, and what we've, what we've seen work is when couples, if they want to actually design their own backdrop or design their own props, um, but then we literally wheel in our, you know, one all in complete for, you know, um, photo booth that's like, it's actually really cool. They, they just redesigned the software for it. So that's actually going to be touchless interface now um, in response to you know, the way the world is now with, uh, with the coronavirus and hygiene. So um, before you used to, you know, type in the numbers and whatnot, and now you actually just wave at it. Um, it's it's going to be really neat. But um, we've seen a lot of fails where couples have um, done everything from, they brought a whole bunch of their old uh, cell phones so that people could come and like take their own their old uh, cell phone pictures, um, and they just kind of leave them on the tables. Um, except that they were old cell phones and people couldn't find the chargers for them, so they brought all these cell phones that were not charged. So the couple was relying on everyone that, to bring their old phones, and then they weren't charged, so they don't have any photos on those phones. So it was a complete implosion. Uh, we've seen a photo booth where they set up all their stuff outside um, in an uncovered area. Um, and with like a little camera on a tripod and a huge windstorm came through right before the ceremony and blew half the props into the pond and the camera on the tripod went flopping onto the side and fortunately still worked afterwards, but there was no more booth for them to actually, you know, do anything with it. Um, we, yeah, I mean, we, we, we know that, you know, there can be a great blend between, you know, if you do really want to have a photo booth, there's great ways that you can save money by, you know, having your own props and being able to do your DIY while also knowing that you don't have to be worrying about it during your ceremony. It's actually just going to be taken care of by your photographers or if you, you know, do hire a, a photo booth company, um, that's, you know, a, a great way to take more stress off of your day. Um, by, but still being able to incorporate those DIYs, but uh, we've we've seen we've seen them cause a lot of heartache, um, and you know we've seen brides. 
five minutes before their ceremony trying to actually get their video uh, equipment working. They wanted to do like a video guest book, um, and, but they couldn't get the, the camera to work. Um, and, it, and, and they're in their wedding dress, like right before the ceremony, trying to stress over whether or not they're going to get this piece of equipment to work. Um, and that was definitely a fail because she was a stress ball about it. And, you know, you should be excited about walking down the aisle, not freaking out because you're, you know, you don't have your cell phone chargers, you know, to, to get the equipment for this DIY thing that you scrape together at the last second. Yeah, I heard about one where um, a photog- it was a deal where a photographer brought his photo booth, but it was unmanned. And there was a problem with it. He went over to fix it and missed the cake cutting. Oh. And so it's like, oops. But I thought you had told me. Somebody told me recently about an officiant who didn't say the right names during the ceremony. Oh, yeah. Oh, we know. That's not a DIY fail. Yeah, we've we've seen that happen a couple of times. Um, Oftentimes, it's, you know, it's in some of the larger church ceremonies. Um, You know, if if the couple doesn't have a a personal relationship in that church, um, then um, oftentimes, you know, the it's usually like a like if everybody goes by you know the nickname but they're only saying their full name or something like that or you know one of the times we actually saw a fail where um they just said the groom's name completely wrong so everyone's kind of looking around like did he just say that and it's just kind of moved right past it um we actually i think the most traumatic like wrong name fail actually has nothing to do with vendors but uh we actually had a maid of honor giving a speech um, and, uh, she actually said the ex-husband's name when she was oh. doing the toast. Oh. Um, yeah, it was, it was a very embarrassing and very stressful moment. Everyone was kind of shocked into silence for a second. And then she was like super flustered and tried to fix it. And everyone laughed about it. And then, you know, people were passing around a bottle of fireball later, um, with a, uh, I, I don't know if you've seen this at weddings before, but they actually put like a, they strap a, a little um, camera on top of the fireball and everybody goes, or passes it around. But there's a video of everyone videoing themselves taking these oh. shots of fireball <laughs> till it's gone. Um, it's kind of a, a funny thing that we've seen at weddings. There's a DIY, something that you could do that's kind of silly. Um, but that, that helps people forget about that real quick. Um, <laughs> Because that was, and I, I'm pretty sure there's the bride that, that went right for the fireball after the speech. <laughs> oh, funny. Okay, what about you, Brian? What are your what other DIY fails have you seen? I had one, and this is the it was the funniest because it was the most surprising, but kind of scary also. It was a cake where it was on um, pillars and it was quite high, and they wanted to kind of save money by getting their own pillars and making it and getting their own water fountain, which we offer, but they didn't want to go ahead and rent ours. So the cake was above this pillar, the waterfall or water fountain was underneath, then it was cascades of two cakes and then a platter of cookies. So when we went to go and deliver the cake, um, we asked, have you tested this water fountain out? And it was, uh, Something they bought, but they kind of edited. So it was like bought off of Amazon. They kind of tweaked it a little bit um, to add another pillar to make the water fountain higher. And they're like, no, we kind of just set it up. It was kind of working a couple of days ago. Well, I didn't want, I didn't feel comfortable putting the cake first. I was like, can you just turn the water fountain on? And it was like a little geyser. It just like shot water up. And I was like, I'm so glad I didn't put the cake because it would have been soaked. Um, <laughs> So I'm like, okay, let's, can you lower down the pressure or something? Like, so I guess when they put the plate, they made the hose too small. So it just condensed the water up. Uh, so I was like, can, can we try and fix that? I don't know. So they were kind of tweaking with that. So they took that to the side and I put the pillars and I was kind of leveling it out and he made them crooked. So two of them were one height, two of them were the other height and they weren't working. And they were like wooden pillars. So he like, um, so I had to go ahead and tell uh, my other delivery driver, can you go and bring our pillars? Can you bring our water fountain? Can you bring our thing? And we'll just go ahead and talk about money later. We'll go and charge you later. Let's go ahead and just deal with it now because the wedding's in like an hour or 30 minutes or whatever it may have been. 
Um, but yeah, the dad was very adamant that this water fountain doesn't work. We don't need yours. I'm like, it's still shooting up too high and too strong for a cake. Uh, so that was very, very scary. But yeah. Oh, that would be. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, well, thank you guys. Oh, do you want to say something else? Go ahead. Go for it. Oh, no, I was just envisioning the cake, like, being launched up by the water. (laughs) 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 I would have hoped I got a picture of it. And we're not, we're not trying to scare everybody by saying these. We're trying just to open their eyes to things to really think through when you're doing it, because we're all for helping you try to stick with the budget and try to stay on budget. But try to do it smartly on what you're picking and choosing to do DIY and make sure that you're comfortable with the choices you're making, right? Yeah. I kind of want to add that there are, like Megan was kind of bringing it up, that there's some really good DIYs. Just ask the professional's opinions. Um, I was kind of want to explain a good DIY. It was um, the groom, he wanted to do a 3D printed topper. Um, and the topper was um, I Love You to the Moon and Back, and it had a little moving uh, rocket ship. So he wanted to talk to me about how to hide the wires in the cake. So we did a tube going throughout the middle. He wanted to figure out how to hide the battery pack. So we did a custom stand to hide it in there. Um, so he kind of walked me through all the steps to get his desired topper, but to make it a good success. Um, the unique thing about this topper is that each table would have a phone number and each table had questions and they would text in the answer. Whoever would get the uh, answer right, the table was color coordinated and the rocket would change the color and move up. All the way up to 10 clicks and it would hit the moon and it would go ahead and shoot out like little lights and little things to it. Um, So it was a process for me to work with him, trying to figure out the wires, was the battery pack going to get hot? We went through all the variables. So he got what he wanted. It was such a unique, great experience, even for me working with like electronics and stuff. And um, it was a success because we communed so well together. So yes, go ahead and ask us. We'll go ahead and definitely um, help you succeed and not have a, uh, have something just for the sake of it or adding on the stress of it. Yeah. Well, that's great. So basically, if, if they talk, if the couples talk to y'all about what they can do and how they can do it, y'all can help them with what's possible, what's, what's not possible. And they can take a rocket ship to the moon. <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> great. Well, thank you guys. Thanks for joining us. And we'll look forward to talking to everybody next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.